Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Yvonne. This is Victoria. So we're going to talk about stereo diffusion for this workshop. So this is our agenda. Um, we're doing the introduction right now, and I'll go over the stable diffusion fundamentals. After that, we're gonna do the coding section, and we'll have a case study. So first of all, what is stable diffusion? It's a text-to-image model that belongs to a class of deep learning model called diffusion models. And you can see an example to your left right here. Um, the problem is underneath the picture. You guys can read it. Okay. Okay. So before um, we get into stable diffusion, we have to understand what diffusion model is since stable diffusion is built based on that. So diffusion models are generative models that are designed to create new data. And in terms of stable diffusion, the data would be the images. So this is the whole structure of how diffusion model works. Um, we can take a look at the training part first. So how you train it is that it destroys the training data. This is called the forward diffusion. After that, um, the model learned how to recover from that image or that data. This is called the backward diffusion. And this is the whole training model, the process, it goes like back and forth, and you have the model that is changed. And at the end, when you pass a randomly sample noise image, like, um, so just random image, no matter how blurry it is, or no matter how noisy it is, you pass it in, and this machine can generate the original image for you. So we're going to go detail about the forward and backward diffusion. This is the two steps in diffusion models. The forward diffusion is quite easy. The idea is that um, when we start with the training image, like the dog at the very left, um, we correct the training image by adding noisy image up to a certain number of steps. So at the end, we get the really noisy image. And at this step, there's no AI or machine learning involved. In backward diffusion, we use a neural network model called UNET to undo the forward diffusion. So UNET is a model that predicts the noise that has been added to the image. So for example, our image, um, you can take a look at the picture at the bottom. We have, at, the, at first we have the really noisy image and we have the predicted noise. So what you do with the unit model is that you take that image and you subtract with the predicted noise. Then you get a lesser noisy image. And you repeat that process a few times. And at the end, um, the goal is to recover the original image. So this is where the AI and machine learning are utilized. <coughs> So, but why are we not using diffusion models? It's because the sequential repetition of thousands of steps makes the whole process slow and heavy. You won't be able to run on any single GPU. And this is why only big tech company like Google and OpenAI has been using diffusion models because um, they have money to burn. Yeah, so let's now get into stable diffusion. This is the structure for stable diffusion. We have three. Um, the first one is the autoencoder. It's for the latent space reduction and denoising. And we have the unit for noise compression and decoding. Then we have the text encoder for text processing. Because remember, stable diffusion is a text to image model. For the autoencoder, this is, um, let me go back. So. You guys can see the latent space over here. The reason that we're using, the biggest difference between diffusion models and latent um, stable diffusion 
is that stereo diffusion has this latent space that takes the image representation and process the whole diffusion process. And this space is 48 times smaller than the pixel space, which is what the diffusion model is using. So this is the auto encoder that used the VA architecture to do the whole taking a representation of an input image into the Latin space and output it. So the VA architecture has the encoder and decoder. The encoder converts the sample, which is the original image, into lower latent representation. And then you get the blue, uh, uh, blue yellow, green-ish box in the middle as an input for decoder. And decoder will reconstruct that image and denoise the sample back to the original dimensional latent space. So this is used for reducing the sample to a lower dimensional latent space. Um, we want it because because um, it's going to process the whole thing faster. Then we have the unit. So as I was mentioning, unit is a noise prediction model that predicts how much noise has been added to the original image, right? And this is the whole structure of unit. So as you can see in the picture, um, you have the input image to your left. And what it does is it takes the more meaningful feature and then compress it, compress it, and do it again and again at the end. At the very bottom, um, over here, at the very bottom, you get the most meaningful features. And we call it feature maps. And what you do to at the right over here is that you undo the whole process, and then you get the output image. The third one is the text encoder. So you want to use your text as an input to generate an image. So what you do with that is you would convert the word into like tokens. After that, you embed it so that the model understand it. And the embedded text is added to the unit with the noisy image. And the text representation go through each layer of the unit and transform together with the image. So the text is kind of like serve as a guideline to generate the output image. Okay, you guys have any question? Thank you. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to go into the interactive section. If anyone wants to follow along with uh, the code, just scan this QR code or go to this GitHub link if you're on your laptop. Okay, so if anyone's actually going to be copying and pasting the code in their own notebook, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna go through the code. Is anyone actually going to be like copying and pasting each line? Or, okay. So, um, if you do want to do this code by yourself, what you would basically do, you'd go to this GitHub link and it tells you that you need to create a new notebook in Google, Google Colab. And you also need to have a Hugging Face account uh, because you need to log in to Hugging Face when you um, do the code. So if you would do this on your own, you would just go to this token link. You would click New Token, Stable Diffusion. You could just do Read, and this would generate a token that you need to log in. OK, so now I'm going to take you guys through the actual code. So the first most important thing to do is change your runtime type to GPU. 
Um, I think it's automatically on your CPU, on none. Uh, when you first open Google Colab, so just click on GPU and save, and then you'll be able to run the code. So these are all the libraries you need to import. Here's some more. And the first example I'm going to show you guys is how to just call the stable diffusion model from Hugging Face just to generate an image based on the prompt. So what you would do, you would um, import the stable diffusion model. And then you want it to be from pre-trained because this is going to be a pre-trained model from Hugging Face. You're not going to be training it from scratch. So this is the version we're going to use, Stable Diffusion 1.4. Um, Hugging Face also has the version 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. And this float 16. Um, there's also 32, but I think 16 is faster. So yeah, here we import our model into pipe. And we have a prompt, such as cute dog. We can set this to anything. And uh, what I heard for one version, for a stable diffusion, you can only have a maximum of 75 tokens for the prompt. And uh, certain words like dream boat, which are kind of compound words, they count as two tokens instead of one. So something just to keep in mind. So our prompt is cute dog. So once we set that variable as cute dog, the next thing we want to do is take that prompt and we're going to pass it as a parameter into pipe, which is our stable diffusion model. So you pass the prompt into the stable diffusion model, and it returns back an array, which is why we do images zero. And we call our image, and here's your image. And it's that easy just to generate um, art from text with code when you just use the stable diffusion model, not going into the actual code. And here we use AutoCast just to make the process faster, because loading the image will take some time. It's not like an instantaneous process. It can take like a minute or a couple minutes. And here's some more examples, cute miniature schnauzer. So here's some more examples. And yeah. So the next thing we're going to go into is the actual stable diffusion code and the components that Yvonne talked about. So here's an image of the um, of the process again. So you have your text encoder, which encodes the prompt, and you have your unit model, unit model and scheduler, which acts as your stable diffusion model, and image decoder, which will take your reduced size image and make the actual image size again. So first thing you need to do is log into Hugging Face to access some features. One of the great things about stable diffusion is it's open source, unlike Dolly and Midjourney, which are also generative text to image models. So what that means is you can really customize stable diffusion by changing parameters, by um, training the model some more with some preset images. So you can make it generate like art in a certain style, such as watercolor, such as comic book, if you additionally train the model some more. So that's the great thing about stable diffusion. So the first part we're gonna look at is the text encoder. We're just gonna load all the components first. So here we can see we're loading a pre-trained tokenizer. Um, for those who don't know what a tokenizer is, is you take something like a string such as cute dog and you break it up into words and it's gonna be an array. Cute is one component, uh, element and dog is another element. Tokenizer will take that array and convert each word into a numerical format such as 72 or 100. And then after that, your the encoder, what the encoder does is it takes that numerical format and vectorizes it so the model can actually read it. The next part we load up is a unit model, which is our denoising kind of stable diffusion model, as you can see here. And the scheduler just determines how much noise to subtract in each step which is again great. You can customize whether you want the same amount of noise subtracted in each uh, epoch or a different amount. And this is the autoencoder model, which will um, take that image from the latent space and decompress it into its original size again. So here we set up our parameters again, cute dog, height, width. Again, this is great because it's super customizable. The noising steps. Yeah, and so we have all of these parameters. And this is again what I just explained. You take your prompt, cute dog, you tokenize it. So you, this becomes 
splits it into words and then makes those words into numerical format. And then what you do is, where's the, here's them better. So you convert that into a vector. So the next thing you do is you um, generate the latents, which is just the reduced size image, the noisy image. And here's your scheduler. And this is essentially the code to go from that super noisy image into an actual image based on the prompt. And yeah, then you decode that reduced size of image. And this is the code to take that, um, that tensor, that vector numerical format of an image, and this makes it into an actual image again. And yeah, that is a simple version of the code. These are just um, some example that is generated by Midjourney Dali is Stable Diffusion version 2.1 with the same prompt. Yeah, you guys can wait. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be all for today's workshop. Anyone have any questions? Can I suggest yes. The only other thing I want to share was there's this thing called Lexica. So if you guys ever want some prompt ideas, this gives you prompt ideas of like what other generative art models came up with, not just stable diffusion. And you can also just access stable diffusion by searching hugging face stable diffusion enter a prompt, and it will just generate the image for you instead of you having to set the code. Cat dog. Oh, sorry, this was, I meant cute dog. Yeah, so, and this takes a, as you can see, a little bit of a long time. Yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. <laughs>